I met a man this past summer who was a storyteller type, you know the kind, and he told me that he was descendant of enemies. On the one side were the Pueblo Indians, on the other side were the Spanish conquistadors. Talk about a clash of cultures. I introduced this video with a historic reference and it has a lot to do with this particular game. In July of 1540, Spanish explorers under the command of Francisco Vasquez de Coronado entered the Pueblo settlements in the present state of New Mexico and everything changed. Coronado was following up on a uh, exploration to the Zuni area from the previous year. A couple of uh, earlier adventurers were seeking the fabled seven cities of gold, and they didn't make it. Um, one of those explorers was killed, the other managed to get back to civilization as they knew it, and report that they had seen a gleaming city in the distance. And so, not surprisingly, Coronado decided to follow up on that and uh, seek the seven cities. Everything we know about these encounters was recorded by the Spanish. And uh, so, of course, it was kind of a biased view. Uh, the Pueblos didn't have a written language, so uh, their side of the stories had to be reconstructed uh, from some of those accounts. And over the succeeding generations, these uh, invaders uh, wreaked havoc with the Pueblo lifestyle and culture. But there was what you might call a cultural exchange. The Spanish brought with them their own favorite pastimes. Of course, the soldiers were gamblers, and the officers probably played chess and Al Kirks and games like that. The first mention of the natives playing games were much, much later, but they were familiar with board games. They played games, uh, race games, and uh, games of position and so on before that. But strategic games that move pieces around the board, that was pretty much a European thing. Now we forward in time a few hundred years in the 1890s. Uh, archaeologists and uh, scholars were beginning to analyze some of the things that they were finding. And when they compiled their findings from Southwest North America, they began to put together a story of the board games that they found being played by the Zuni and the Tewa and other tribes in the area. Now Stuart Coolen, I've mentioned him a lot, but he was one of the uh, premier game historians and uh, pulled together a lot of information about ancient games from around the world. He also composed a two-volume work called Games of the North American Indian. This book was published in 1907 and he brought together the information in a way that was accessible by casual readers and enthusiasts of games rather than just the scholarly world. The book contains a lot of descriptions and references of those uh, games influenced by European games uh, all the way from Upper Canada to Mexico and the East Coast to West Coast. Mr. Coolen doesn't really speculate on the origin of these games other than to say that they were introduced by the Whites or based on games introduced by the Whites. But one of these games, however, looks a lot different than its European cousins. So if you take one section of the geometry from an Alkirk board, which of course was played extensively in Spain, and you reconfigure that into a longer pattern, you get this. The uh, Zuni tribe calls these games uh, Awithlaknanai or Awithlaknawet, and uh, that translates into killing stone or stone that kills, hence the name of this game for this week's uh, video. Another popular name for this game, uh, this family of games, is uh, Fighting Serpents. The two intertwined zigzagging patterns there can be envisioned as uh, two serpents entwined in a, a wrestling match, I guess. But it is a family of games, uh, from small to large. We released uh, the Fighting Serpents game here, which is the smaller version of it, uh, with uh, nine pieces per player. It's all the way up to a version with 15 pieces per player that's called uh, Kaloas with uh, Laknanai. Now Kaloas or Kaloisi uh, was a sacred serpent spirit, the water spirit. Again, it's, a, it's that serpent analogy that finds its way into the game. Our more recent version of the game is this, 
which is called the Masona uh, with Loch Nanai. It's kind of the median size. It's got 12 pieces per player. You recognize that pattern again here. The rules for Awith Laknanai are so very similar to Al Kirk's that uh, I think it's pretty obvious that the Spanish influence is there. Very likely a derivation of what the uh, Pueblo saw being played by the Spanish. So let's take a quick look at those rules and I'll be back in just a few minutes and talk a little more about the game. The Peg Pastimes version of Stone That Kills provides each player with a force of 12 pegs, black or orange. These pegs begin the game in this configuration, with the center hole empty. Players alternate turns, and all moves are of two types. Move a peg one space along the lines on the board, or jump another peg and remove that jumped peg from the game. The first move is obviously very limited. The second move a little bit more flexible but that's when the strategy really begins to take hold. Jumps must be in a straight line following a pattern on the board, and if a jump can be made, it must be made. This allows a player to force their opponent into making a jump, sometimes to their own disadvantage. This series of moves continues until either one player runs out of pegs or one player can't move. In either case, that player loses the game. And that's pretty much all there is to the game. Quick and simple, easy to learn. It has its own little strategic challenges. The uh, patterns can be recognized a little bit ahead of time. If you play a lot, you can say, if I move this here, this whole chain of events happens. And that's what makes the game interesting, I think, to be able to see forward to uh, anticipate those chain reactions and obviously bend them to your advantage. So look for Stone That Kills on our website or its little brother, the uh, Serpent Game, either of which are fun time. This is a nice little portable travel game here. The bigger one is not quite as portable, but definitely looks great on your game shelf. So if you learn to play Out With Loch Nanai, or learn to say Out With Loch Nanai, this is the game for you. But meanwhile, whether you play this game or any other game, you know what I always say. Be sure to play every day. <laughs>